Welcome back guys, this is The Waves back with another tutorial series on the channel. Now, if you watch my Java tutorials, I have a good news for you. IntelliJ IDEA have released a new version for their IDE for Java on May 16, 2017 and the current version is 2017.1.3. Now, I'm going to be doing uh, at least 5 videos on this IDE. Now, a lot of people have asked me that, what is the best IDE for Java developers? I have used NetBeans, Eclipse, BlueJ, and my favorite IntelliJ IDEA. And the conclusion is that IntelliJ IDEA is the best IDE for Java developers, for beginners, and even advanced people. Now, they have two versions, Community Edition and Ultimate Edition. So, in this video, we'll talk about the difference between Community and Ultimate Edition, and we will cover a lot of topics in this tutorial series. For example, we will look at how to build compiled Java projects, how to import Eclipse or NetBeans projects in IntelliJ IDEA. We'll look at the user interface and how to debug code using IntelliJ IDEA. I'll show you how to program with other JVM languages as well, such as Scala, Groovy, and Kotlin. So, IntelliJ IDEA comes in two different editions, known as Community and the Ultimate Edition. Well, this page on the JetBrain website can help you decide whether the Ultimate Edition is for you or the Community Editions. All the features that are available in Community Edition are also available in the Ultimate Edition. The Community Edition is the base project. The Ultimate Edition adds capabilities, for example, the languages. And I will also show you how to work with Scala via a plugin. But in Ultimate Edition, you also get support for JavaScript, TypeScript, and SQL, and all the other languages that are listed on this page. There are also support for Java frameworks. In the Community Edition, you get support for Java FX and Swing. And there's also Android functionality, although I would recommend using Android Studio for that instead. If you are if you are an enterprise Java developer, so you might be interested in using Java Spring framework, Java EE, Grails, and Griffon, or any of the framework that are listed here. And you will also see strong support for various web frameworks, including React and AngularJS and backend technologies such as Rails. Let's look at how we can install IntelliJ IDEA. Now if you go to the JetBrains website, let me just go to the home page and we will click on taking a bit longer to load. Okay, so the first option here at the bottom here in the middle actually, IntelliJ IDEA. Just click on that and then click on download. Now I will take you to this ultimate or community edition. Now, just simply click on download and it will start downloading that file. So, it's just going to be like a few seconds before it starts downloading. Okay, there we go. At the bottom, you can see that it's saying that type of the file can help your computer. It's just a message from Chrome. Just click on keep and I'm pretty sure that you are able to run the setup. All right, so you need two things, uh, IntelliJ IDEA and Java JDK. So I've already done the tutorials how to install JDK, watch that video. So now I have assumed that you have installed IntelliJ IDEA or you have already installed in your system and you got the JDK installed as well. To check the JDK, we'll just go to command prompt and here we type the command Java space dash version. And it will tell me what JDK version I have. So right now I have 1.8.0 underscore 131. All right, so we have a JDK install. We got IntelliJ IDEA installed in our PC. The first option I wanna I want you to know is the built-in update functionality in IntelliJ IDEA. Now I've used NetBeans and Eclipse. Uh, their process of updating it's a bit different, but IntelliJ IDEA has this uh, amazing feature that can check whether the software is updated. If not, it can automatically be updated. So what do you do? You will go to the configure button and then click on check for updates. Now it's going to go and check for updates and it will tell me if there is any new versions came out and I will have an option to install that. Now a lot of people just click on update and just uh, check for updates and see this okay where version is latest 
but they don't really get the another option which is hidden here update so it says to configure automatic update settings see the update dialog box all right so instead of just closing this dialog box i'm just going to click on updates now I get another uh, dialog box here now here i can see it's there's an option for automatically check for updates use secure connection last checked moments ago and current version of my IntelliJ idea and build number of that now here is the most important option now, as you know that i've already checked for updates and there was no new latest version for me to update but now if i go and click on this drop down menu and i will see that i have selected stable releases that means the updates i will get will be stable releases now i have another option for beta releases or public previews and early access programs. So if IntelliJ IDEA or JetBrains team are uh, working on the latest version of IntelliJ IDEA and they just uh, publish the early access program and that, that means that early access program, there's going to be bugs in the software, it might not be stable, it might crash while you're working in Java. So the most important thing is here, you need to make sure you get the stable releases installed when you're working on a proper project. But if I go and select early access program and I would click OK and then close this and we go back to configure and check for updates again. And this time it should give me an, another version which should be an early access program. And there we go. And this time when I check for updates, it's giving me a fresh IntelliJ IDEA 2017.2 EAP. So EAP means early access uh, program built build this out all right but if i work on a proper project where i'm working for a client or I'm working on my own project i will avoid using this early access or beta versions i won't download it so what i'm going to do here instead of just downloading release notes include i'm just going to go and ignore this update okay and we'll go back to configure configure and I want to show you the same option available in the setting as well so now at this time I'm going to click on settings we go to appearance and behaviors and then we click on system settings click on this uh, arrow and then here we should see system updates system updates system updates here updates okay so when you click on updates you get the same options but a different way of showing that right it's in the setting dialog box so here i will change this to re stable releases so i make sure i only get prompted or notified for stable releases for intelligent yeah. idea and this is the option a lot of people they don't really know how to get the beta version or early access version all right so next we will look at how do we configure IntelliJ IDEA for Java development. Now, every time you create a program, you get a prompt for selecting the SDK, but you can set a default SDK for every project you create because you're gonna be developing in Java and IntelliJ IDEA, right? So what we're gonna do, click on configure and go to project defaults and click here and then click on project structure and you get this dialog box. And here you have an option for projects, libraries, SDKs, global libraries, and problem option. First, let's look at the project. Now here you can see when you install uh, IntelliJ IDEA, a fresh copy of it, you have no SDK installed, uh, no SDK selected for a default project. Now whenever you create a project, when you try to build the project, it will ask you to select this SDK instead of selecting there you can set the sdk for every project you create in intellij idea so we'll click on this drop down menu and here you can see i have 1.8 java version 1.8.0 underscore one uh, 131 now if you notice that the version is simply 1.8 that means it makes your program portable so if you take this uh, program and then run it on another machine which has a different jdk install the program should be able to run now i will select 1.8 and now every project i create in intelligent idea will be built on 1.8 java version the next option we have this sdk default now let's say you are you want to work on the syntax of java 1.7 or 1.5 so this is the old version of java is available here 1.3 plain old java so if i select that and i create a project 
by default, I will have to follow the old plain Java syntax. Now you want to use the latest one, which is Java 8, which includes a Lambda expression and type annotation as well. Because if, uh, let's say you create a project with IntelliJ idea, uh, uh, project language level setup to 1.4, you won't be able to use the Lambda expression. And if you do use Lambda expressions, you will have an error. So by default, you can see that SDK default, which is set to eight Lambda and type annotation ETC. So you can select that. I'll leave that SDK default, or you can just manually select the Lambda expression type annotation dot ETC, or you can even go to the modular private method. Now, one thing I want to mention here, if you have this Lambda expression selected, all of the previous versions of Java will be included in that. So you will still be able to use the uh, interfaces, classes, uh, assert keyword enumeration. So as you can see, enumeration was introduced in Java 5.0 version. So what I do, I usually leave that as a default. So SDK default. Next, we have the libraries. Now, when you develop a Java project or Java application, you add a testing framework for that application. For example, JUnit. All right, so let's say for every application, you need to test that application before you build that or package that and ship it to your client or whatever you want to do with it. So you will need to use the JUnit. So instead of just adding that uh, manually for every project, what you can do, you can click on this plus sign and then here you will navigate to where you have downloaded JUnit. And then you will just give a part of it and click OK. And every project, whatever you create in IntelliJ IDEA, will have this library added to it, class part or external libraries uh, by default. So you don't have to go and look for, for JUnit every project. So you can add external libraries, Spring, Framework, and all those things you can add by default. So you don't have to go and look for them. Now we have the platform settings here, whatever the SDK we've selected 1.8, we have the settings for that as well. So the class part, so these are all the jar files are added to class part. As you can see here, I have installed Java in C program files, Java JDK 1.8, and I've selected all this jar. This is, this is coming from um, SDK by default. Now one more option here that uh, for beginners who are learning Java language is a documentation. Now, if you try to access the documentation into your Java class or Java application, well, we'll talk about that in the later videos. But here, let's say you don't have an internet and you want to download the documentation in your PC so you could access that without even, in, uh, without even connecting to interface. So what you can do here, documentation part here, you can add a documentation I have actually documentation downloaded in the PC and there we go so this is the Java FX uh, documentation and JDK docs all zip so I will select the JDK HU 1.2 so this is the old documentation actually I need to download the latest one but if you download the latest one which should have HU 131 instead of 121 I'm going to click OK and the documentation zip file has been added. Now, if I try to access the documentation, it will take my, uh, it will give me documentation from the PC instead of taking from internet. Now, if you want to add the internet documentation, you can click on this plus icon and you see the small circle there. Click on that and it will automatically have that part for you. So docs.oracle.com, Java SE8 docs API. But I would highly recommend download the documentation once for all. You don't need to worry about internet, so you can access the documentation and learn Java while making your applications in by staying into your computer instead of going to internet. So I'm gonna add another one, which is Java FX API. So you can even add the documentation zip file for Spring Framework, for Spark for Kotlin, Scala, and all of these documentation you can download and just give a path directly here. So I have selected JavaFX, click OK. I'm gonna apply by selecting this one and then click OK. Now we have the global libraries option as well. We'll talk about this later because we need to know like how to work with the Scala, Groovin, or Kotlin, and um, Maven. So by default, it gives you an access for Maven and Scala, but we will learn how to add Kotlin, Groovy and all that stuff. So these are the global libraries, so we don't worry about this now. 
Before we end this video, I want to talk about some of the settings that you can change in IntelliJ IDEA in user interface. Now, to get to the setting, click on configuration, click on settings, and you get to this dialog box. All right, so here, I want to show you some of the appearance settings. So if I click on this uh, arrow, I get this drop down and then I click on appearance. Now here, the first option is if you want to use the Dracula theme, click OK. And this is a Dracula theme and I really like it. But uh, yeah, it's up to you which one you want to use. And uh, but I want to change this to IntelliJ that is default. So let's apply that. Now, this is a uh, two themes that are Dracula and IntelliJ. There's a Windows theme as well. And nobody, nobody used that. So we'll change that to Dracula team. Let's appearance, appearance, or a few of the options that I want to show you here to show line numbers. These are very important. So if you uncheck them, uh, or you won't see the line numbers. So I want to keep them on. Okay. And then we have this uh, show method separator. So let's say you type two methods in your Java class. You want to separate that with the line. So it could be helpful to separate the methods up to you guys. And these are two options that you can change here. Next, we have optional code completion. This is very good. Make sure that you have selected the basic completion and smart drive completion as well. So whenever you type something, it will give you suggestion. And that's the best thing about IntelliJ IDEA. Right. Let's go to the colors and fonts. Here, I want to show you the fonts. If your fonts are pretty small in IntelliJ IDEA, you go to editor, colors and font, click on a font, and then here. Uh, by default, I think it's 12. It depends on your screen resolution, but I'll keep that at 16. You can change that as well. And you can even change the primary font as well. You can change this to a mono spaced or whatever. It is. But I'll leave that as a default because they're pretty okay. Next, we have a general option. So, there are so many options that can you do, but uh, it would be like five hour long video if I will go step by step. You need to look around and see what you can find, what are the settings that you can do. So we're going to click OK. So those were the common uh, settings that you want to do. Code auto completion, a font setting, and the theme setting. That's pretty much it is in the setting, but you can look around. There's so many options available that you can change. All right, so that's about it for this video, guys. And if you like the information, make sure to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any question, let me know in the comments below. From the next video, we will look at the migration from other IDEs to IntelliJ IDEA, like how to import the projects and stuff like that. And then we will learn how to create a project in IntelliJ IDEA. And we will explore the structure of the program, which is created by IntelliJ IDEA for Java. Alright, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Chase.